You know, you've reached the heights of celebrity culture when your army of fans has a name. Beyonce has the Beehive. Justin Bieber has Beliebers. And Oscar-nominated British actor Benedict Cumberbatch has inspired a phenomenon known as Cumbermania. With his rabid fans giving themselves a name, you'll have to Google yourself. Long before Cumbermania began to sweep the globe, Cumberbatch was a successful stage actor in the UK. His breakthrough on screen came only eight years ago, when he starred as Sherlock Holmes. In the time since, the 42-year-old has built a reputation as one of the best and most sought-after actors in Hollywood. Benedict and I got together here in New York for a Sunday sit-down to talk about his career and his latest, more family-friendly role. Let's talk about the elephant in the room, perhaps by the elephant in the room, I should say, the chinchilla or the ferret in the room, which is your mustache. Uh, what do we got here? Viewers uh, want to know. It's just, you know, usual mangrove. Uh, no, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm doing well, so this is, this is going to be this is gonna be short and sweet, thank God. It gets in the way of food hygiene and uh, <laughs> kissing people you love, let's put it like that, it's just not pleasant for them. Benedict Cumberbatch is always preparing for the next big role in a run of success that began with the hit BBC series, Sherlock. The name Sherlock Holmes and the address is 221B Baker Street. A performance that still has his fans in the UK and here in the US clamoring for more. What's that? Another season of Sherlock, please. Thanks, dude. Sherlock, perhaps in America, yeah. was the coming out party. And globally, it just shocks me quite how far the reach of that program is and its success. I, I knew they were doing something right when I read the script for the, for the audition. I thought, this is very funny. Did you catch a murderer, Mr. Holmes? Caught the murderer, still looking for the legs. I think we'll call it a draw. He earned an Emmy Award for the show in 2014. Roa, get off my sheet. Sherlock is just one on a list of iconic characters, both fictional you, and real, that have made Benedict Cumberbatch a household name. <laughs> Your calculation is wrong. He played famed physicist Stephen Hawking in the 2004 film Stephen Hawking. Stephen I read somewhere after he passed away, you said, I will miss our margaritas. Yeah. I didn't know Stephen Hawking drank margaritas. Well, that he was even allowed to. No, he did. <laughs> uh, no, he, was, he was really good company. Full of humor, full of warmth and mutual respect and utter adoration on my part. He took on the role of Julian Assange in The Fifth Estate. We're winning an information war. And he earned an Oscar nomination as World War II codebreaker Alan Turing in The Imitation Game. We were going to break an unbreakable Nazi code and win the war. Oh. You're not afraid to, to play a real-life character, you know, whether no. it's Julian Assange, obviously The Imitation yeah. Game. Yeah. Do you seek those out? No, I mean, I, the only thing I seek out is some kind of originality every now and again. If people go, hey, you're always playing brainy outsiders. I go, right, I've got to find someone who's <laughs> your average Joe. No one ever will accuse Patrick Melrose of being an average Joe. The title character in the acclaimed Showtime series is an upper-class Englishman dealing with drug addiction and a dark past. When I was eight, and for some years afterwards, my father abused me as we're invited to call it these days. How gratifying is it to have been celebrated in that role the way you have been? I mean, it's, it's wonderful. We really went for it, and we did something with it which we're really proud of. I'll have another of your very refreshing martinis and some salmon tartare followed by some steak tartare. Ta -ta -ta -ta. Cumberbatch has made his name with heavy roles, but he has ventured into blockbuster territory, playing Doctor Strange in the Marvel series Avengers. Doctor. With the doctor. It's strange. Maybe. Who am I to judge? I try and keep myself interested so that I surprise myself and hopefully the audience. Cumberbatch was raised in London, the son of two British actors, who, by the way, just happened to double as his on screen parents in Sherlock. Are you two smoking? No. It's my I wasn't exactly born aside the trunk, but there was a slight caravan gypsy feel to yeah. it, this thing of the moving circus and, you know, whether it was tours of plays or going to see them on locations that just inspired me and made me think, oh, I really want to have a go at this. I want to be part of that. But his parents weren't always so sure their son should join the family business. 
They were very sensible acting parents who wanted their son to have an education to choose to do anything but acting. So it was their example and not their words that drove you to acting. Um, you could tell they liked what they did. They loved what they did, and they're so loved for who they are within their profession. After very briefly toying with a career in law, Cumberbatch indeed chose the theater. Today, he's married to actor and director Sophie Hunter. They have two young boys together, and the role of dad may have influenced his latest career choice. I'm going to steal their Christmas. He plays an icon of a different variety, the Grinch. Given the kind of roles you play, when someone called you up and said, they want you to play the Grinch, this great, iconic Dr. Seuss character. What'd yeah. you think? I, I thought, fantastic. It's always interesting for me to see someone adopt a character that people are familiar with, and they have some impression of. Yeah. Um, because you want to keep the core and the integrity of that character. Absolutely. How did you approach it? It was just a process, I guess, of just looking at the original book and realizing I couldn't be that kind of evil and mean and pointy and spiky for a whole film and to remember that he really enjoys it he loves being the grinch what's it like to see it up on the screen it's magic it's absolute magic what's this excuse me are you getting that no beyond being a great Christmas holiday movie, what's the message? I think it's sort of twofold. One is that, that you really can't steal Christmas if what you're trying to steal is the material aspects of it. And the other one is, if there is a Grinch in your world, or life, it doesn't have to be green, it could be orange, uh, you, the only real way to deal with it is to go towards it with love and understanding and kindness. A role and a message to make his once reluctant parents proud. So what do they say now? The boy who they told not to become an actor is one of the best known and respected actors in the world. <laughs> well, thank goodness, because otherwise they'd be furious, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and The Grinch is in theaters now. Our thanks to the Barleycorn Bar and Grill for hosting us there. To hear Benedict sheepishly talk about the Cumbermania phenomenon, check out our web extras at today.com slash Sunday. And don't forget to subscribe to the Sunday Sit Down podcast to hear the entire unedited interview with Benedict Cumberbatch. You can find it on TuneIn or wherever you get your podcasts.